Hey, it's Bo. Um, it's just me this time because this video is going to be um, sort of about the broader theme and layout of the upcoming album. And that's just my department. So let's go. Through the writing process, um, it became really clear at some point that the songs we were sitting on were sort of separating themselves into two camps. One is a bit more mellow and theatrical and, and probably more in line with what our first album was. The second was just a lot more straightforward and guitar oriented and riffy. And so at a certain point, what we decided to do was instead of making it one 12 song album, we decided to split it up six and six. Musically, um, there's a decent amount that differs from our first effort. The first big difference is just the fact that a third of the band is a different person now. And we're really excited to have a new drummer and we're excited what he brings to the table and how he's changed our sound. This time I finally feel like a vocalist. The last one, it was more position that I fell into because we had just lost our singer and our bassist. And we just, you know, we were, we were friends as much as we were a band and we just didn't see a reason to change the chemistry when you know, honestly, I think chemistry is more important than how many members you even have in the band. Jen also sings a lot on this album, and I gotta say, I think it sounds great. started getting into synthesis this time around, uh, mostly because the sounds that she was using before were great in most situations, but sometimes they were pretty limiting, like um, the Rhodes patch that we're so fond of on the previous album just has a lot of analog noises that sort of mimic the original Rhodes, and those sort of things can just trail off and do weird muddy things when you start running them through uh, aggressive sounding pedals. This time around she uses a lot of fuzz and distortion and so um, she started getting into synthesis so that she could uh, tweak, attack, and release and decay and things of that sort. Jen is definitely the unsung hero of the album and I think the reason she flies under the radar is because she sounds so much like a guitar. For me, when I was mixing, like even knowing which parts were keys and which parts were guitar, I would still have my mind blown every time I would mute the keys and just listening to all of the weight disappear. You can pretty clearly hear what I'm doing. You can clearly hear what Ben's doing, but Jen is like the glue that holds it all together. This could be a broad and possibly incorrect generalization, but I feel like the guitar parts are more repetitive and easier to get into this time around. What really struck me at the time of writing the, the musical portion of the album was the concept of the Urim and Thummim. I was really interested in some of the lesser known elements of um, ancient Israel and how they did things. And it actually took me a long time to figure out how to pronounce Urim and Thummim. And I'm still only like 90% sure. And you might be asking yourself, what kind of idiot would name an album after words that he doesn't know how to pronounce? And the answer lies in the fact that um, conceptually, it seemed to fit the sound of the songs. So the, the Urim and Thummim are stones 
that the ancient Israelites would use for divination and deciphering God's plan for them. And there's still actually a lot of mystery surrounding how they actually worked. There are some simpler and more, I would say, naturalistic um, ideas of how they worked which would just be that they were two smooth, similarly shaped stones and you pull them out blindly and you don't know which one you're going to get. Whichever one comes up would indicate whether the person was guilty or innocent or whether the answer was yes or no. There are more supernatural explanations for it. Well, the words actually translate to lights and perfections. And some people consider that maybe the Urim would light and actually like glow according to whatever judgment the Thumim had passed. And so as some of the songs sounded more edgy and aggressive, um, I thought that they really served the theme of guilt very well and that the mellower, more theatrical songs um, sort of sounded a bit more innocent. And so that is lyrically and musically how the albums are split. One album serves to really explore I don't know, just the, the depths of human depravity and and our collective and individual guilt. And Thumim serves as more of a mirror image of Urim and um, each song is a lighter and more innocent perspective on whatever the uh, the corresponding song talked about but we're excited to tell you guys about each individual song we don't write songs just to write them and so these are the ones that made the cut and that we poured our heart and soul into so i hope you'll enjoy the upcoming series <laughs>